these earlier. All right. Welcome to the show, everybody. This is Cade Archibald. Really excited to have you guys on. And we got Reagan Archibald here, the one and only. Reagan, how's things going today? Good, good. Awesome. Uh, so today we're going to be diving into some, some really cool stuff on um, different mindset cycles, the abundance cycle, um, scarcity, and, and really where we want to stay mindset-wise and, uh, and, and look at how we can uh, do better with uh, tran transformational health. And so uh, really excited to, to dive in here. Um, Reagan's going to be covering some cool stuff from, uh, from his book and, and some other sources. So Reagan, what, so what, what do we got going on today? Well, today we're going to primarily, we, we will talk a little bit about the cycles, but we're going to talk about habits for cultivating better energy. So these transformative habits that can really boost energy. That's the goal. Nice. And, and so if you look at your life, your life is just a series of habits. And so it's usually not that somebody is not committed to feeling better or having better energy or improving on their life or their relationships. It's usually just a series of habits that we we start creating and these habits can either, you know, lead to a pathway of, of more abundance in health and life, or they can lead us down a path of kind of frustration and, uh, you know, kind of failure in a way. And so if, if you look at your habits for just a second, think about the habits that really move the needle for you in your daily life. So, so Cade, what would you say that your top habits are right now when it comes to health? Um, probably my top habits would be, uh, breathing. So in the morning doing some breathing exercises, mm -hmm. uh, some, you know, at minimum push-ups and air squats. That's like, that's my jam. Nice. Um, and then, uh, and then I, um, I do timed eating so that I, yeah. I've be, I've got pretty dang good at that. I'm pretty proud of myself on that one. You've, you've got that ingrained in me. <laughs> Good. Well, how many hours? What What's your timed eating look like? Uh, sometimes it's like three hours, um, but you know, it's it's usually about eight. Okay. I'll uh, yeah, I'll go. Um, yeah, pretty much till like about noon or one, and I'll wow. eat till anywhere from you know, I'll eat around um, and then you know, eat around like six seven to finish up the night. Beautiful. Well, good. So, um, so these habits, these, these are great habits. And so what I'm going to ask everyone to do right now is just think of your top, the, the healthiest habits that you've got in your life. And uh, just take a minute, write those down. Like Cade shared with us, you know, the, the timed restricted eating, the timed eating is that's a phenomenal habit that he's put into place. Uh, making sure he's exercising every day, air squats, push ups, you know, at the very minimum, um, yeah, those are great things. Breathing exercises. I mean, those are huge. So, so today we're going to jump into some of these transformative habits because I think it's the most important thing you can do. And as I was preparing for this webinar and, and this show, I asked Aaron, I said, you know, Aaron, what are Aaron's uh, one of our health coaches and Aaron, I said, what are the top 10 things that our patients do on a regular basis? to uh, really get their health in check. So I'm gonna share with you some of the insights that she took from our patients uh, right here at East West. You know, uh, one of the things that they found that really transforms people's health is organization and creating a home and health environment that's clutter-free and that actually lends to health. And so I think that's, that's kind of a key component, right? So that that's crazy you mentioned that. Um, what The, the book, um, the Something of tidying up. What's that book? You know what book I'm talking uh, about? Yeah, the magical power of tidying up. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, my wife Sierra was uh, she was watching a Netflix series on that, and I got home yesterday, and like she had gone through all the clothes and had like folded them a specific way, like even my underwear. Like wow, my, my, my boxer drawer was just like fine tuned. Um, amazing and then abby did it too my my eight-year-old daughter she um uh sierra and her went up to her room and got it all uh straightened up and tidied up yeah isn't that crazy? It, feels, it feels so nice yeah i think um we forget like 
the environment around us is so powerful. I mean, think about how it feels when you walk into someone's house or a building and things are just like organized, things are taken care of. Every little detail is, is kept up. Um, I remember uh, we, were, we were staying, I believe it was when we were at the Four Seasons Kid in, in Oahu. And I just was like, man, this place is so well kept. It just the energy was amazing. And I noticed I was walking down the hall one day and, and it looked like one of the, the janitor's doors was open where they have all their towels and the, the soaps and stuff. And I was like, I got to close that door. I don't want to ruin the, the flow for anyone else here. But um, yeah, I think that's, that's really important. So there's, there's a health habit you can look at. Um, another one that she found is just regular exercise, having a routine in place. And I find that if you don't do something every day to exercise, it's much easier to go 100% in than 90% in. And so if you're like, oh, today's my cheat day or it's the day I'm not going to exercise, it's my recovery day. Even on recovery days, you know, I like to, I go for walks, I go for hikes, I get in a yoga class, a Pilates class, and those are great ways to recover. But you want to do something every single day. Because it's much harder when you take that one day off and then the second day, life gets too busy. And then that third day, fourth day, fifth day, before you know it, you're exercising once a week and you're a weekend warrior. And so, um, so exercise every single day and make it part of your routine. Um, number three, remove gluten, dairy, sugar, soy, corn, as much as possible. So eating clean has, has been one of the, the top 10 things. If you just say, look, I'm just drawing the line. I'm not going to eat these things. Once again, 100% is sometimes easier than that 90%. Uh, Kate, is there anything you do in your own life to uh, keep these things at bay, to, to avoid the gluten, sugar, soy, corn? Um, I, I like to do other, uh, other recreational activities. No. Um, so so it, it's, that's, a, that's a tough one, but... I, it's just ultimately making that decision and then also looking at or just assessing how your body feels after them. I think that's, that's the one thing that makes it a lot easier to avoid some of those foods is like after you eat them and you start getting a gut ache or you just don't feel as sharp. Um, that's, that's usually like the, the easiest way that makes you want to want to be that way. But yeah, I'll, I'll um, have some, some different, you know, gluten things uh occasionally here and there um i just get a lot of gluten flam oh yeah you, <laughs> take, you some, take some take uh some gluten flam or some zyping yeah take some enzymes, digest the right? yeah. yeah yeah and that's those can be really helpful but but i find um yeah. ideally you just stay away from it yeah and if you just don't have it in your house it's much easier um uh next one is drink lots of water. Now this one is so important and so powerful because a lot of us are running around dehydrated. If you're thirsty, you're probably too late. There you go, kid. So get that that glass of water first thing in the morning. Remember when you wake up, you're already eight ounces depleted in hydration. So you need to wake up, drink a nice glass of water, put some sea salts in there, put some lemon, um, cranberry, unsweetened cranberry. These, these are some good things you can add for your hydration, but for sure put salt in your water first thing in the morning. It's amazing. Um, next one, have a spiritual practice. So I don't, you know, and, and you can call it spiritual, you can call it a relaxation practice, whatever verbiage you want to use, but you need to have something that gets you intact and in touch with uh, you know, your deeper self, your deeper meaning and what life is really about. And I think that could be, we could put, easily place any one of these at number one, but we're just talking about 10 top habits that you can do. And so spiritual practice of some kind, this is where I find that even uh, giving yourself goals and, and allowing yourself to accomplish certain projects along the way, things that you're kind of scared to do. Um, that is a spiritual practice in and of itself. Uh, more traditional spiritual practices are where you meditate, um, you pray, and I find those are, are very powerful as well. You have some type of service uh, that you do. Um, Cade, what, what do you see that in, in your practice uh, spiritually, do you have anything that you find is, is kind of a you know, it's synchronistic that is universal where anybody could apply it? 
Yeah. And I, and I think this is something that we're trying to do with our, our kids a lot, but it's just starting out the day and, and doing some breathing exercises with, um, and thinking about what you're grateful for. Yep. Um, so I think if you start every single day with gratitude, um, you're going to be a, a lot more um, willing to take on, you know, it, it's easier to overcome and take on different challenges because um, you, you realize the bigger picture um, and then, you know, it's, it's just, we need to get, I, I don't like to, uh, instill entitlement either. And so I want my kids to be grateful for, uh, for life and for just the small things. Cause that's, that's really what it's all about. Totally. And I, I think, uh, you know, gratitude and the gratitude journal is the next one she has on here, but yeah, doing something like that because it does become spiritual. And so, you know, I think this is a good segue when you, when you look at your life, gratitude everything as far as health goes and this is in in my book your healthy self one of the the core things that we're trying to accomplish is help people love the way they feel about their health and you can't love anything if you're not grateful for it but try to be negative and grateful at the same time it just doesn't work wow. try, to, try to be loving and negative at the same time it doesn't work try to be loving and angry try to be grateful and angry it just you know that gratitude just it, it removes all that heavy weight of those negative feelings. And so um, I like to have my kids, we go through the winds at the end of the night. Every time, every night at dinner, we go through winds. And it's funny because I can tell they're waiting for me to ask. And sometimes if I don't ask, they're like, dad, what's your win? And so I'll, I'll dive in there. Nice. I, I got to start that. I'm, I've been at your house when you do that. I love it. It's, it's fun to hear you know, what, what the kids accomplished, what they did. Um, yeah. It's, yeah, I, I got to definitely start doing that a lot more. Yeah, your kids are uh, old enough now where they can, they can not all of, but the, yeah. the other kids, kids <laughs> yeah. got a brand new baby, fresh, fresh out the womb. Um, okay, so the next one is uh, planning and preparing meals weekly. And this is so fundamental because if you go and you're like, okay, I got five minutes, I got to get out the door, and you're just grabbing whatever you can out of your fridge, a lot of times it's not a smart way to go about your, your days and your life. And so one of the most popular classes we have here is our meal prep. So that's where our health coaches take our patients through and they write out, they help the patient just write out everything they're going to eat throughout the week. And then they get a grocery list because what's the hardest thing, Cade? What would you say the most difficult thing about planning and preparing for meals weekly is? Uh, having the food available. So the shopping part of it and just getting it there. If it's yep. there, it's easy. But it's, oh. it's like you open the fridge and it's like, yeah, I, I got like French fries and I, I don't know why you'd have French fries in your fridge, but <laughs> like you're, that's what you're going to be nasty. But. <laughs> <laughs> you got day old fries. <laughs> Potatoes. I was on uh, I Am Salt Lake. I was on the I Am Salt Lake podcast, uh, Kate, on, uh, on Sunday. And uh, the question they ask is, from your childhood, what did your house smell like? Which is a very interesting question. And I, I said potatoes. <laughs> I mean, uh, we grew up in Idaho. My mom was always making some kind of yeah. potatoes. So. It was either mashed potatoes, baked potatoes, funeral potatoes. French fries. Yeah, it was hilarious. So, so planning and preparing your meals weekly. Biggest thing is there's really cool apps. Like you can use Thrive, Amazon now. They, I mean, you can go and everything is actually picked out for you. Um, I mean, there's so many services that make your life easy. And so then what you need is a coach and a mentor to help you create the strategy. And they'll show you some, some shortcuts there. What is that? Is that Harmon's, Cade? Yeah, this is Harmon's. Uh, apparently, my wife just placed an order and then I'm going to go pick it up. But their personal shopper texts you and says, hey, is there anything extra we can get for you? Um, right. Isn't that actually, awesome? Super nice. Yeah, you just pull up, they load your car up, and you're off to the races. Yeah, because it can take, I don't know about you, Cade, but I'm like the shiny object shopper. Like I'm, I'm like banned. It's, it's, uh, it's beyond my self-control. And by the end, <laughs> end of the thing, I'm like, I came in for two things and I'm like, I got a $400 bill. So yeah, it's, it gets scary. Well, and then if you don't have a plan, if you don't have like a shopping list or something, yeah. it's like you just get random stuff and it's like, okay, what, what am I going to make with this? Yeah, that looks good. And I got some random stuff, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so uh, I think, you know, as you're going through this, this, once again, that's a transformative habit. Next thing, and this is key, this is in my book as well, but I talk about sleep. And sleep is one of the most important things you can do. Give yourselves an extra hour of sleep. You know, see how you feel. Instead of giving yourself seven hours, expand it to eight. And instead of eight, go about eight and a half, maybe nine hours. See what you do best with. But sleep is one of those areas that we think we, we need to wake up early and we need to, you know, condense that amount of time or being lazy if we're sleeping. But I can promise you, you're going to be so much more effective in your life and in your day if you're getting good sleep. And so uh, think about your, your evening ritual and your morning ritual. And those are going to be some things that are some of the most important that you can do. That's where you sleep in a room that's below 70 degrees. You have, bring your, have an eye mask so that it's blacked out. Make sure it's quiet. Make sure you don't have Wi-Fi on and you have your phone on airplane. Um, all those things are really important when it comes to sleep. I also find if you use uh, CBD oil, so Charlotte's Web makes an awesome CBD oil. CBD, if you take some CBD at night, um, it can help you just sleep like a baby. Some of those uh, um, endocannabinoid receptors are really help open up the melatonin pathways. So uh, you can sleep great that way. Um, the other thing I find is uh, making sure you're getting good fats at night. Eat, eat an avocado with your uh, evening salad. That can be really important for you. And then get hydrated, get lots of minerals in at night before you sleep. Um, next one is your relationships in life, your family, your friends. Um, if you think about that, those, if, if you have healthy relationships, it just, I mean, it spans into your entire life and relationships. I think those are what really make the, your life meaningful at the end of the day. It's like, well, your life is, is a reflection of the quality of your relationships. And that can be the relationship with yourself, relationships with other people, um, friends, family, uh, and then the, the final thing that Aaron's got here is limited time on technology and social media, which goes right into relationships and family because Cade, what, what would you say some benefits are for like, you know, Jonah, my son is, he's really good at his Instagram and he, he's got his, like his list engaged and, and, um, you know, he's 12, but he's like, he's really good at that. But how can he balance that out so that he doesn't get sucked into that, that world of social media? I think some of the, the pros is you're able to connect and, um, you know, people are able to consume content a lot easier and freely now. Yeah. Um, and so for Jonah, you know, being able to show off some of his skills, um, have, have fun with it. Um, you know, it's, it, it can be kind of a game, but you know, it, it is kind of that fine line where you, you don't want to just completely, uh, uh, box yourself into that social media piece because, you know, if, uh, especially while you're enjoying a moment, um, like, you know, something cool is happening and someone's like flashing their phone in front of it. It's, it is, uh, you know, a little bit, um, like, um, it, it's, it, I, I don't want to say annoying, but it's just one of those things where it's like, are you really present? Um, or are you just trying to get that for your Facebook feed or your, your Instagram feed? Right. Um, I think, um, yeah, it, it, it is a, a fine line that, that you have to walk, but, if you can have fun with it and you're not on your Instagram all day and getting uh, frustrated or, or, uh, or like your, your whole days revolves around getting likes on, on uh, your, your Instagram posts, then you know, I, I guess it's all right. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think there's like some benefits, like we've got uh, Instagram here. So we oh. can play, people can be engaged in the conversation, which is amazing that we can do this. You know, there's, this is being broadcast to thousands of people. And, uh, you know, so that's, there's some magic in that. But there's also oh, absolutely. Magic in turning it off and actually connecting with people. And so, yeah, I think setting, uh, setting some parameters around that is one of the, the most powerful habits that you can have when it comes to health transformation. So, so now let's talk about some of the, uh, the top 10 unhealthy habits that we see with our patients, and it's probably reflective in some of you. Um, I think it's really important to think of these unhealthy habits so you can tell yourself the truth because all progress starts by telling the truth. So number one is sleep duration and quality. People go to bed too late and then we wake up too early. We don't give ourselves enough time to sleep. 
And so just the other night, um, our dogs started barking in the middle of the night. And, and for some reason, I don't know what was out there. It was probably a moose in my backyard. And uh, they just kept barking. So they kept us up for about an hour. And it was on the weekend. And so I fortunately, I said, you know what, I'm going to change my alarm and put it an hour ahead. And I was able to just fall back asleep, tacked on that extra hour. And I'm so glad I did that because I felt just as good the, the next morning. So, so if you have the opportunity, add some extra sleep to your life. Not enough water intake. So, so Cade, what are some ways people can actually get enough fluid intake throughout their day? Um, have a, a handy dandy water bottle next to them. Um, yeah. That can be helpful. Uh, you just talking about it may, may actually want to take some drinks. Yep. Yeah, I think um, start your day with but, water. Yes, I, I think when you wake up in the morning, um, have a full glass of water. You feel so much better. And, and just if you have a process behind it, then, then at least you get that in. Because some, you do forget, like even if this is sitting next to my desk, um, sometimes I don't drink it for hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, there are apps. There's like water bottles with sensors in it. And so you can actually track the amount of fluids you drink. I mean, that's phenomenal, right? That's rad, yeah. And so uh, if you need that kind of uh, assistance, you know, look up the water tracking, uh, water consumption tracker, I think is what it's called, something like that. But, but yeah, the water is important. Next one is drinking alcohol in excess. And so if you think about it, you know, why do we like alcohol? I mean, what, what, what's kind of the, the thing around alcohol? Alcohol, is, you know, historically it's called spirits, right? And it's, it's like a connection. Alcohol works on oxytocin. It works on the GABA receptors. So it, it puts your body in this kind of relaxed state, but it depresses your nervous system. And a lot of us have our nervous system that's on hyperdrive all the time. And so I think if you look at when we drink alcohol in excess, we're looking for a deeper connection with something. And we're looking for that, like just the disconnect from that constant nervous system, system irritation. So, so what would be some good uh, solutions for drinking alcohol in excess? What can you do in place of that? That that's a great question. Um, uh, that I don't like what, so as far as, Oh, Hey, um, <laughs> Hey dad, <laughs> He's coming to help us move our office. Oh, he's awesome. Um, he, he's awesome. So, yeah, so for alcohol, some different uh, alternatives, I guess you can do different herbs, um, uh, food. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, there, there's uh, – are you talking about, like, that same feel? Is that oh, what yeah. you're – So, in, so uh, I, don't, my don't trilogy – my mitra leaf is uh yeah, mitra leaf's great kava is great uh cbd oil is great there's other things you can do to help be like okay let's disconnect let's let's relax i'm not opposed to that by any means i mean we've done this for as long as humans have been around um and it does create a nice cycle in your day but the other thing is when you are consuming alcohol in excess you really want to take a step back and say, why am I doing this? And then focus on relaxation, relaxation through the day and taking care of yourself, you know, every hour instead of the, the end of the day saying, all right, I earn this drink or on the weekend, it's been a hard week, you know, just make your life pretty enjoyable every single hour that you can. And you're, it's going to eliminate a lot of that excessive alcohol consumption. Yeah, so I, I like that a lot. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, eat sugar, eat or drink sugar. This is unhealthy. I don't think we even need to uh, like explain what sugar can do to the body, but yeah, that can be a big one. Toxic relationships, uh, huge, unhappy with career hobbies, no spiritual practice in place, no physical activity routine in place, no planning or preparation in place, excessive use of technology, electronics, and social media. So so these, I, I mean, they go into the top 10 habits. Obviously, you just look at the contrast and we've got our 10 unhealthy habits. But I think once you start focusing on your habits, you're going to go from the scarcity place in health to an abundance. 
And the abundance is where you have greater gratitude, greater creativity. You'll start cooperating more. You'll see more opportunities in your life. These opportunities will lead to ingenuity, and then it leads to exponential growth. And so we're trying to change the way people look at their health care, where it's, it's just if you focus on 1% per day, for even just 100 days, just try this practice 1% per day for 100 days, you'll notice you'll have 100% transformation in your health and that will keep you in the, the abundance cycle. The scarcity cycle is where you go to lack, you go to fear, I can't do this, there's no way I can put these habits into my life. Well, okay, and now there's this fear that comes in, what if I don't? Well, if you don't get your habits changed, there's going to be diseases that show up. Then you get mad, say, oh, it's not my fault. I have to earn money. I got kids. I, I can't get a good sleep. I got a, I got a newborn, you know, kid, right? And so you can get angry about it. And then you can say, I should be entitled. Everyone should take care of my health. It's not about me. And then you <laughs> Hey, wait, are you in my head? No, yeah. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then you say, look, I don't have, there's nothing else I can give. The world is out to get me. I mean, this is, everything is depleted in my life. I've got nothing else to give. I, no one else cares about me. And then you go to the zero sum game. Well, look at how healthy he is because his life is better than mine. He was, he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. So <laughs> that's the scarcity cycle, right? Yeah. Well, and the, the thing is, is it's so much easier to fall into that when you don't get enough sleep. Like, oh. because that like it's it's uh getting enough sleep right now is is kind of tough with a, a brand new baby because mm -hmm. it's like you know you got the dogs barking at 3 a.m that that happens like consistently right uh, yeah she <laughs> so, needs to be fed yeah and so now it's um yeah you, you have to really make sure you you're focusing on that that gratitude and and looking at what you can create and and do and and focusing on that abundance cycle because yeah, I, I, I can, um, I, I would say I'm sleeping pretty good, especially for having a newborn, but um, I, I can see how if, if you have a tough time sleeping, if you're not sleeping, like you will fall into that scarcity cycle very fast. Oh, your mindset just goes to, um, goes down the toilet. Yeah, you start hallucinating as Dan Sullivan would say. And yeah. you, really, you really create these, these interesting ideas about why you don't have health in your life or you know why you're not uh, supported all these things show up and so uh, i think more of the story today is look at all your habits look at what you're doing that's transformative that really moves the needle that one percent per day for a hundred days that's our hundred day healthy self challenge and so i want you guys to get engaged in that if you're if you want to take your health to the next level let's sit down and have a conversation a health discovery session all you need to do is email me reagan at go wellness and then I'll make sure that one of our coaches or team members gets in touch with you to get on my schedule and let's get, uh, let's get your health to the next level, get you out of this scarcity cycle in health and bump you up to the abundance cycle. Beautiful. All well, right. Th thank you guys for joining us today. Um, awesome show. Amazing stuff. Um, I'm, I got some great ideas to have better habits. Thanks, awesome. Reagan. You got it. And uh, we're going to have a document that's going to be a downloadable PDF with healthy habits and unhealthy. So look for that uh, in the show notes and uh, we will be getting that out on our email list as well soon. Awesome. Have an amazing day, everybody. Take care.